Ladies and gentlemen, peak anime has returned. Kimetsu no Yaiba, AKA Demon Slayer is back, baby. Now I was just gonna do a reaction to the series, but man, YouTube is copywriting a brother left and right. I'm so tired of this, dog. I know there are YouTubers that are able to do anime reactions just fine. I don't, YouTube don't like me when it comes to anime reactions, bro. <laughs> they just don't. So, had an idea. We're gonna try something new. I'm gonna go ahead and just do reviews of every episode after they come out. The way it'll be structured is like this. It'll pretty much just be starting with me introducing the episode. It'll be me giving a quick recap of everything that happened in the episode, and then me giving my thoughts and opinions on things that happened in different moments and where the story's going and yada, 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 all that good stuff. Now, every introduction isn't gonna be this long. This one just was, cause you know, it's the introduction to the series. But with that being said, bruh, Demon Slayer season four, episode one, let's get it. So to begin, we start the episode with a scene of the snake and the wind, Hashira, along with two other random Demon Slayer Corps members pulling up on some abandoned castle. Apparently some demons kidnapped some villagers and brought them here for whatever reason. I guess they wanted to kumbaya around a campfire and have the villagers as a little snack. But anyway, next thing you know, they see one of the demons running off with a villager over his shoulders. So they start to chase this nigga inside the castle. Now when they get up in there, two of the demons try to get the jump on them from around the corner, but the Hashira shut that shit down with the smoothness, baby. Now this ends up causing every other demon nearby to rush the Hashira, but they just too goddamn slow. The Hashira tell the other two members to just run away because they're actually just in the way, which I was thinking that the whole time. Like, why are y'all even here, bro? Just, just, just go home, go back to the headquarters. Now the wind Hashira ends up using second form claws purifying wind to wipe out half the room of demons in one slice. And the snake Hashira does the same thing with serpent breathing fifth form slithering serpent now the demon that kidnapped the girl takes off running like a little bitch <laughs> but the wind hosh like nah fam where you going and he gets to chase his ass down there's a lot of demons running around from all over the place so you really can't even focus on the person they was chasing because they got to keep on stopping the fight so they decide that the wind hosh is going to continue chasing the demon while the snake hosh stays back to fight all the demons in the castle he was using techniques like third form coil choke. I don't know, I feel the need to point out whenever a new breathing technique is used for the first time. Now the wind Hashra made it rain blood with fourth form rising dust storm, some tornado action. Yeah, we knew we wind Hashra was gonna be able to make tornadoes, but it was just dope to see it happen. Now the kidnapping demon throws the girls at the Hashra and runs away. They chase them only they end up floating in the air above the infinity castle. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I thought it was over for my boys, bro. I'm like, God damn, really? Like the beginning of the season, that's how y'all gonna do us? But hey, as soon as he got close to stabbing him, somehow the door closes and ended up back outside. So next we see Kanao returning from a mission she was on and she gets updated on the Swordsmith Village stuff by Shinobu. We also get to see Nezuko and Bez just chilling outside her box because as you all know by now, she overcame her weakness to the sun in the last arc, so she's just out here. Tanjiro wakes up from what apparently was a week long sleep and starts eating like Mitsuri. <laughs> That boy appetite was crazy. And the other Hashira, having already recovered, had a gathering in a separate room. Now this gathering is actually a meeting that is led by the master's wife because he's too sick to make it out from here on out. So I guess they'll never be able to see this man again. Probably one more time when he's about to die for real, but that's tough, bro. But anyway, she ends up asking Tokito and Mitsuri, the Mist and Love Hashira, what caused the marks they had to appear. Because a long time ago, a swordsman of the first breathing form almost defeated Muzan, and he had the marks appear, so it was kind of a big deal. According to the legends, whenever the legendary marked one appears, marks will also manifest on other people, and I think we know who the marked one is, <laughs> main character, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, they tried to explain how they made it happen, and it pretty much boils down to what happening in a life or death situation, a fight or flight type deal. Anyways, the Hashira are told they're going to undergo some training to awaken the mark. They also say that something is eventually going to happen to the two that already awakened the mark, but they don't reveal what that is. Bro, that pissed me off. I'm like, come on, bro. Like, damn, man. You hiding stuff from us already? We're going to have to make us figure it out? I'm just going to guess that it means that they're destined to die in battle or something, but I don't know. So after the master's wife leaves, Giyu tries to leave, but they're like, nah, fam, where you going? We need to talk about this shit, bro. And he's like, nah, I'm not like y'all niggas. <laughs> On some Kendrick Lamar shit, they not like us, you know what I'm saying? So the wind hostage is like, boy, what the fuck? You think you better than us? Nah, hell no. Nah. Now he's finna pull up on them before they can fight though. The stone Hashira flexes his power a bit and makes everybody in the room freeze in place. I've been saying for the longest, I think the stone Hashira might low key be the strongest Hashira. We're gonna find out as the art goes on. But yeah, he pretty much tell everybody to sit their ass down because he got a plan you gotta tell them about. Now, in the meantime, Zenitsu returns from a mission he was on, and of course, he is shocked to see Nezuko just walking around outside. Now, she ends up calling him a Nosuke though, which is hilarious because this man, Nosuke, has been teaching her to say his name over and over and over in an effort to get her to remember it. This is a pissing Zenitsu off. Now, he said he gonna kill this man, Nosuke next time you see him. And those guys, you better watch your back, brother. And in the meanwhile, between while, Mr. Haganesga actually brings Tanjiro his new sword, his new Nichiren sword with Rengoku's guard on it. Now this new sword is a different depth of black than the previous one and is apparently made out of much better material and it has the word slay carved onto it. Long story short, it's the ultimate sword. Now hopefully Tanjiro don't break it again. Inosuke overhype ass breaks through the window for no reason just to let Tanjiro know that the Hashira training plan is about to begin soon. 
which is the plan that Gyome creates because due to the lack of demon appearances ever since Nezuko conquered the sun, they got more time to focus on strengthening the slayers they already have as opposed to hunting demons now so much. He even plans on asking the retired Hashira to help out with this, so you know this is about to be crazy. By the way, Giyu did end up leaving early anyway. They're making it seem like Giyu was about to have his own little mini arc before the real action takes place, so we're about to see what's going on with that. Now, Zenitsu is the only one who's not excited about the training, but he ends up cheering up at the Tanjiro, thanks him for essentially teaching him how to use thunder breathing, like a weaker form of thunder breathing, which was the only reason he was able to catch the demon he was chasing in the last arc, so you know what I'm saying? Hey, shout out Zenitsu, my boy. Now, the next scene reveals that Tengen Uzui is in charge of physical fitness training for the core members and of course he's now rocking a new eye patch with a big ass jewel on it like goddamn bro like that jewel gotta be heavy how does that even stay on your face but anyway his wives are helping out with making sure everyone has food to eat tokito is in charge of high speed movement training misery is in charge of flexibility training iguro is in charge of swordsmanship training chinazugawa is in charge of endless strike training and finally gyome is in charge of muscle strength training which makes sense with him being a stone Hashira. By the way, the Hashira are all participating too because they figure that fighting all the core members will make them stronger too. Well, I mean, except for Giyu who isn't participating, which the master sends a letter directly to Tanjiro to let him know about it. Again, I think Giyu about to get his own little mini arc, so can't wait to see that. And meanwhile, Lady Tamiyo gets a direct visit from the master's personal messenger crow who asks her to come back to the Ubiashiki residence to join Shinobu in her research of Nezuko's condition. Because you know, Tanjiro already had her researching and looking into it anyway, but apparently Shinobu was good at that kind of stuff too. So they're like, bro, just come to the, to the mansion and join in. Like, you know, two heads are better than one. And after that, that was the end of the episode, bro. And the next episode is called The Sorrows of the Water Hashira, Giyu Tomioka. So we got a Giyu episode coming up next. That thing sounds like it's going to be good. Are they finally going to give us some good backstory on Giyu? More than likely. So, hey, my thoughts on the episode. First of all, we finally get to see the Wind Hashira and the Snake Hashira in action. Bro, <laughs> they was taking out demons with the greatest of ease, with the smoothness, bro. I mean, they're Hashira. We, are, we expected this. These are just like, you know, regular rank and file demons. But look. It was dope. We, all, we already know that uh, Kimetsu no Yaba got peak animation, bro. You know what I'm saying? These niggas get a whole goddamn year to work on 11 episodes, bro. Of course, the animation is going to be God tier. On the real, though, when they almost fell into the Infinity Castle, bro, that was a legit jump scare. I'm like, yo, there's no way they start the arc off killing two of the hostages. That's what I thought was going to happen. I thought they was going to fall into the Infinity Castle. Muzo, I was going to pull up like, yeah, y'all dead now. I was going to be like, bro, what the fuck? Demon Slayer, really? But nah, they ain't do us like that. They ain't do us like that, thankfully. And then, listen, man, it's the first episode, so it ain't too much going on, you know what I'm saying? He's reintroducing the characters again, showing what all the characters have been up to. People come back from missions. They all meeting back up again. The Hashira have meetings. Uh, old boy, the master, I, I forget the master's name, y'all, uh, but he is, like, sick to the point where he can't even run the meetings anymore. They said he they won't even see him no more, bro. So he's just bedridden. Like, the next time they see the master, like I said, it's probably going to be when he's getting ready to die he's probably gonna want to address them all one more time give one last speech before he pass away that shit tough dog hopefully it doesn't happen while they're all fighting in this arc now because they were off on their own missions we didn't get zenitsu or Nosuke last arc you know what i'm saying so it's gonna be nice to have them back again you know i told hey they're my boys bro nezuko out and about walking around in the sun bro not only that but she can control her demon form like her super enhanced form even though she showed that already last season i'm just saying dog nezuko is evolving see they are saying that they thinking that she's turning back into a human i don't think she's turning back into a human she's evolving as a demon bro like she's ultimately gonna be I'm telling you, they're going to they gonna make a new Hashira, the demon Hashira. <laughs> She's going to be the only one to ever hold it. This is going to be crazy. And then them Hashiras. I already speculated, bro. I think that the stone Hashira is going to wind up being the strongest among the Hashira. What do y'all think, bro? I really think it's going to be the stone Hashira. It's shaping up. Especially how, like, when he when he flexed his power in the room, when they, when they was finna, like, fighting shit, he was like, wow. And told everybody to sit down. Everybody was looking at him like, yo, what the fuck? Like, I really think... But that man has so much hidden power that he just never shows because he ain't got no reason to unless he's in a fight. And, you know, usually Hashiras, when they go off on missions, they go by themselves. So they might not even be aware of how strong Gilme is. Like, for real, for real. I think he's the strongest one, bro. That's just my prediction. I don't read ahead in the manga or nothing. So some of y'all probably already know the answer. That's just my guess. But it seems like every one of the Hashira are going to end up getting a mark. Or not every one of them, but most of them will end up getting a mark on their face. Because Tanjiro is over here already making some of them get marks, bro. Muichiro and Mitsuri. She, they both got a mark on their face during their last fights, bro. Tanjiro about to have everybody marked up. Hopefully they all survived the fight against Muzan, but you know it's going to be some casualties, bro. That's the thing. They hold my boy Rengoku, dog. I, I know it's old, but they hold my boy, bro. How they going to have him fight Akaza, upper three? 
All this damn struggling they've done with every other demon has been a lower rank demon than Akaza. The first ever upper moon that we seen was Akaza. Took that boy out. And now we get all these lower... And again, these, these dudes ain't no pushovers. But I'm just saying, the fact that they had Rengoku go against upper three is ridiculous. And matter of fact, now that I think about it, I speculated before that Rengoku was probably amongst the strongest of the Hashiras. Not the strongest, but amongst the strongest of the Hashira before he passed away. Everyone is saying, nah, but bro, that crazy fight he had with Akaza, he gotta be up there. Even though, technically speaking, Akaza, like, wasn't really trying that hard in the fight. It's still, the fight he put up, bro, with upper three, I have to imagine that he would have been able to take out upper four, five, six, you know what I'm saying? You know, things like that. Tanjiro, Zenitsu, and Inosuke all about to get stronger. They doing their thing, man. This arc about to get crazy. Again, it ain't really too much to talk about in this episode because it's the first episode, bro. But... Y'all make sure y'all stay tuned for the remaining episode because I know them things is going to get crazy, bro. I can't wait to see the new abilities, the new techniques, the new demons they fight. I just can't wait to see it, bro. And it's going to ultimately culminate in a battle. Well, okay, obviously the ultimate combination is the battle against Muzan, but I want to see Upper Moon 1, bro. I want to see him. I already have been spoiled on it. If y'all ain't been spoiled on the, his kind of breathing yet, I'm going to give you three seconds. Go ahead and mute this video. Three, two, one. Moon breathing. That man has moon breathing, bro. Oh my goodness. Obviously, sun, moon, sun is the original breathing style. He uses moon breathing. This shit gonna be crazy. So, hey, make sure y'all check out the next episode review. That's gonna come out next week after the episode airs. I don't know what day, but, you know, we're gonna work on it. And we're gonna go ahead and talk about that thing. Also, y'all hit me up in the comments and let me know how y'all like these reviews. I mean, I guess this is less of a review and more of like just a recap of what happened in the episode. But this is kind of how I got to do it because, you know, uh, copyright and everything. You can't really do reactions no more, anime, man. You be tripping. I might still react to fight scenes, though. I ain't gonna lie. Y'all let me know if y'all want that. But make sure y'all show a lot of love to this video. Like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, we up out of this thing. It's your boy Daryl. We signing out. Peace. Yeah.